mom and I had this opportunity to write this cookbook together that was an exploration of you know, personal truths of our family legacy and then also bigger picture truths that would never have happened if I hadn't wound up moving to rural Mississippi straight out of college. I um, became a core member with Teach for America, and I'd grown up here in Nashville, was raised eating Southern food. Um, my grandmother was a librarian um, for Tennessee State University, a black woman. My grandfather or husband was uh, a civil rights attorney here in Nashville, um, and so he made very little money. Um, and so she sort of supported the family with her income as a librarian and collected cookbooks and then would, you know, was the kitchen of the Nashville civil rights movement in many ways. Um, and so I learned about food and about sustaining collective communities in the city and in the bigger picture through the lens of the idea of the civil rights movement, through the lens of the idea of these, of like a make, matriarchal structure and of like providing as an act of surviving, or creating food as an act of surviving. Um, and so then when the, and my grandmother, when she died, she left me 2,000 cookbooks, which is how, so, what, <laughs> they, they, they live here in Nashville today, and that's how Soul Food Love came about um, in, in some ways. Um, but you know, you're thinking about this food, and I was sitting there in 2011 in Greenwood, in Sunflower County, Mississippi, you know, and cooking the food that, you know, five generations of black women before me in the South had taught me to make. And my students were these black kids on a dirt road in the Delta telling me that I ate like a white girl um, because I baked my chicken because I didn't put fat back in my greens because I used spices instead of pork because um, I like to eat salted peanuts instead of pork rinds because I didn't want to go to Popeye's. Um, and I said, no, y'all, I eat like an old black lady. <laughs> I told them I ate like an old black lady. And I, and, but I called my mom, and I was looking around going, like, how do we reframe this narrative? Because we're dying from this. We're dying from this. Like, the, the idea that eating healthful, like, eating greens, eating baked chicken, eating baked fish, eating a handful of berries, the idea that that is white is killing us. Um, and I'm living here in Mississippi on my teacher salary, and I'm figuring it out. But it's a peculiar exercise, clearly, for a lot of people. Um, and so then this cookbook came about and it allowed me this opportunity to do this, like, sort of these radical acts of excavation about, you know, I'd always known um, that there were European origins to much of my or their European roots to much of my, you know, genetic makeup, but um, thinking about how did that happen? Why were these women in those houses? Why, um, why were they exposed to those encounters? Um, and kitchens are why. Food is why. Um, you know, you ask, and this is one of the complicated things, you know, you sit at the SFA events and we talk about farm to table and how excited we are to curate corn or something, you know? And you tell black kids in the Delta that they should pick their vegetables. And they're like, you want me to be a slave? You know, they ask you that. They say, what do you, what, why do you want me to touch, put my hands in dirt? Um, and I think that when we think about coveting this farm to table thing, farms were not so pretty here very recently. Um, and the vegetables were pretty, and the flavors were pretty, and the memories of those things are precious, but thinking about what it meant to put those greens on that table, put that corn, uh, pick those peaches, pick those apples, dig those yams out of the ground. How did those things get from the ground to the table? Whose hands were on them? Who got to eat them? Um, those are the questions that we spent a lot of time asking in the book, that I spent a lot of time asking myself. I mean, I sit on both sides of that, you know, because of that <laughs> funny, complicated truth of the plantation rape. I am the rich white boy who ate the food and the um, strong black woman who endured the suffering. Um, 
that's, that's in my genes, so I'm trying to reconcile it now. But I think that I'll leave that there. I don't know what the answers are, but I'm sitting with the questions. <laughs>